Hello Dinosaur Hunters! Today, we will be talking about a game that sold so poorly it made your aunt's garage sale look like a Black Friday shopping spree. But hey, before we roast this underrated gem, let's take a deep dive into its wild and uncharted territory. Back in 1999, Acclaim was aiming for the multiplayer market and wanted a slice of that delicious juicy multiplayer pie too. It just didn't quite hit the high notes. All jokes aside, the game for some reason never reached the same level of recognition as the competitors, not even its own Turok siblings. It's a real head-scratcher why Turok Rage Wars didn't set the sales chart on fire. Some reasons are self-explanatory, like the fact that it never had a PC port. It's worth mentioning that a Rage Wars on PC with online multiplayer would have undoubtedly reached a much wider audience. While the competition started expanding on PC, Acclaim remained primarily an N64 gaming company and was left behind for the most part. They hardly ever went all out with experimentation on other platforms. I'm not saying a PC port would have turned things around, but it sure could have given those sales numbers a decent boost. Coincidentally enough, Turok 3 didn't have a PC port and didn't quite hit the jackpot in terms of sales either. Maybe there's a pattern here. No PC port, no booming sales. Now, before we delve into the possibility of Night Dive Studios resurrecting this game from the grave, it's important to highlight some of the flaws and how Night Dive could address them. If I were to ask each one of you what you missed the least about this game, it would undoubtedly be those frag missions. Oh boy. How many times have you almost made it to the infamous white square, only to get blasted over and over again until you'd fail the mission? Sometimes, however, the game didn't even allow you to skip these levels, and you had to endure the frustration. Don't get me wrong, I don't see any issues with side missions in general, but when the game forces you into them, it becomes a bit inconvenient. It's the equivalent of the universally disliked flying levels in Turok Evolution. Oh, blood. More of that in an upcoming video. As for the maps, the majority of them were, to put it lightly, overly claustrophobic, almost like trying to have a dance-off in a cramped phone booth. The repetitive nature of these confined maps could indeed become quite tiresome. Instead, having fewer but larger and more creatively designed maps could have provided a refreshing change of pace. Aside from these debatable flaws, the game is exceptionally well-polished, featuring a wide variety of fantastic weapons and characters, excellent sound design, and a unique vibe. In addition, the game boasts some exceptionally creative boss battles that add to the overall experience. Unlocking new characters, weapons, and attachments is immensely satisfying, adding depth to the gameplay and keeping players engaged. While some of the maps in the game were thoughtfully designed and provided an engaging experience, it's worth noting that others were more of a hit and miss, varying in quality and player enjoyment. Even with all its flaws, a remaster of Rage Wars would undoubtedly be appreciated. However, it's precisely those poor sales and mediocre reviews that might be the roadblock standing in the way of a remaster. After all, for game developers and publishers, it's all about numbers, and if the sales figures weren't quite up to par, well, it might just be game over for a remaster. However, Night Dive Studios could potentially address some of these issues by introducing a level editor that allows players to create larger and more creative maps. Moreover, implementing a built-in Steam Workshop could provide a platform for players to share and enjoy custom content. Now here's the crucial part. If Night Dive doesn't implement an online multiplayer once again, it would totally defeat the purpose of Rage Wars and would let its fan base down. The heart and soul of Rage Wars lies in its multiplayer experience. It was a blast back in the day, and it could be a blast once again if done right. So, the burning question is, would a remaster be beneficial for Night Dive Studios, given that the fan base for Rage Wars has always been small? You see, it's a bit of a tricky situation. The game might only sell a few thousand copies here and there. The only possible way for Night Dive to potentially remaster Rage Wars is if the remastering process doesn't need too much work. In a live stream with the CEO of Night Dive Studios some while ago, he touched on the fact that they might bundle it as a DLC for Turok 2 or even release it as a standalone title. Although this sounds good on paper, bundling the game as a DLC for Turok 2 would require customers who have no interest in Turok 2 to buy two different games for one. Ouch, right? This could discourage potential players and might not be a user-friendly strategy for those who only want to buy Rage Wars. The second option would be to release it as a standalone game, which makes more sense since Rage Wars should be treated as a different game. This approach could attract more attention, 
but it might come with a higher price tag for Night Dive and encounter more obstacles in development. Night Dive has some decisions to make when it comes to resurrecting this classic gem. To wrap things up, the fate of Turok Rage Wars is uncertain, but there's hope for a comeback, and let's await the future of this not-so-dino-hunting multiplayer mayhem.